so submarines. Um, no, um, we Russia. can't. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the we Comfort can. Level Podcast. I'm Maddie, and I'm here with... Brandon. Myra. Sam. So basically, we'll, we'll have a, we'll let's, let's a Sam do an example yeah. of milk. That's the word. Okay. And you have to transition us using milk of some type. Oh, my God. And, yeah. Milk? Do you have one for milk? He's so excited no. for milk. <laughs> because I, I naturally say milk, and he uh, makes fun of me for it. So now I'm saying milk. Yeah, milk is so gross. <laughs> you can't You don't want any milk? milk? No. 2%? Because I'm not even a milk drinker already, but saying milk is what I think of when drinking milk. Like it's the yeah the milk. It's milk. like yeah, milk. It's, that, milk. it's that foam. It's that <laughs> ugh. ugh. That's milk. Better. Okay, well, yours is sister's wedding. Brandon, okay. your word is kitchen. Kitchen. And uh, Myra, your word is Jamba kicking. Juice. Kicking. Kicking. Okay. Kicking. 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 Just, just, kicking. just the one. No, just, just the one kicking. Excuse the stutter. <laughs> Ladies, your man at home. <laughs> I feel like I would hear that song like at my sister's wedding, <laughs> which is the title of the next story. Oh, wait, that was mine. <laughs> <laughs> so, am I the asshole for leaving my sister's wedding early because she kept my husband out of pictures? Hmm. <laughs> my 31 male sister Anne, 34 female got married on saturday my husband of seven years mark 32 male was there with me and up until one point it was an amazing evening after the ceremony Anne wanted a picture with all of us siblings there's five of us and their respective partners so we started lining up when Anne saw that my husband was standing next to me she shook her head and said something about ruining the aesthetic apparently her plan was to put one man and one woman next to each other alternately yeah. my youngest sister 18 female who doesn't have a partner was standing on the other side and offered to stand between the two of us so we could be close and Anne's wishes would still be respected I thought this was a great solution, but Anne disagreed and told Mark to get out of the picture. He's quite introverted and tries to avoid confrontation under all circumstances, so he simply complied and told me not to get angry, but it was obvious that he was hurt and disappointed by being left out. Obviously, it didn't stop me from getting angry, and I walked away with him. I can understand that Anne wanted her wedding pictures to look exactly how she imagined them, but I think that the idea my younger sister proposed was very reasonable. I congratulated Anne and her husband one last time, but then I said my goodbyes. When I was asked why we were leaving early, especially before taking the pictures, I said that I didn't feel like our presence was wanted. We left before dinner was served. I took Mark out to his favorite restaurant to cheer him up a little bit. Anne has texted me since saying that I was being overdramatic and making a fuss over nothing. Our parents have tried to remain neutral, but except for my youngest sister, the rest of the family supports Anne and thinks that leaving early was going too far and that I should have sucked it up instead of ruining her big day. I feel like her taking her husband out to his favorite dinner is really kind of childish. Like, let me get you a happy meal. I'm so sorry, buddy. <laughs> Who? Uh, OP? Yeah. Like, oh, okay. It's kind of patronizing in a way. Yeah. But I think uh, OP is a man, by the way, just so you know. Oh, OK. Yeah. I still think I still think that's kind of petty. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't have sisters, so <laughs> I don't know what that's like. Yeah. But since this is a first on this show, this is our first married person. This is someone who's actually <gasps> married. Yeah. Oh, wow. We don't know what oh, we're talking surprise. about in marriage. And now <laughs> we got a person who actually is married. So would you do this? At your, well, I guess your wedding wasn't, you didn't have all the I had like stuff. a shotgun yeah, wedding yeah. in Reno, so mm -hmm. it wasn't like. So, bad. but you had a bigger wedding. Would this be a thing? Would would you do what the bride did in this story? And be like, your person is ruining the aesthetic? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I don't think so, because I think like if they've been married or together for so long, seven years is a long time. Mm -hmm. Like that's longer than I've been married. I'd be like, at the end of the day, that is your family, whether you like them or not. So mm -hmm. I think that was going too far, just leaving. But at the same time, I get it because if that was my husband's family and they're like, she can't be in the picture. 
I'd be like, excuse me, like, why? Is it because I'm brown? I don't know. Like, yeah. oh. it's different. I don't know. I feel There's like. There's a racial component. To it. That yeah. changes it, too. Th- that's true. Like, it spices it up a little. Yeah. Right. Because I would be like the only spice in the in the mix. <laughs> like, and I'd be like, I feel kind of, I don't know, yeah. insulted. So I, that's just my two cents. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Because, like, on one side, I think you kind of have the right to take whatever pictures you want. And if you don't, if it doesn't fit what you want, this is your wedding, almost. So I'm like, it is. It's not almost. It is absolutely your wedding. So you should be able to kind of dictate how it goes. But I get hurting people feeling that that was wild. That's he said that. But I'm like, (laughs) but it's your wedding. I feel like you kind of do have the right to do or have it look how you want it to look. Is it about them? Yeah, I mean, I I agree with both of you guys. And I, I like the sister's suggestion where she was like, if you want it to be a uh, man, woman, man, woman, why can't the sister just be in between? Right. But for whatever reason, it's like, because I mean, I'm sure somebody on the on random like Instagram isn't going to necessarily know like who's partnered up with who. So right. it's not going to be a big deal. Right. Um, but yeah. I, I also kind of see like the dinner as a way of being like, hey, sorry that we had to leave the wedding so early. Are you hungry? But I, I also <laughs> see your point too. But yeah, I, I, I don't know. I feel bad for the guy. Um, that's that. Bad. You don't feel bad? <laughs> no, that was the only part of the story I was like, <laughs> when he's like dejected and sad, I'm like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's not your wedding. <laughs> that's where I'm like, I would feel bad. They're like, he's the groom. And they're like, um, I can't have you in the picture. I'm like, <laughs> it's my wedding. Why would you do that? But I'm like, at someone else's wedding, I'm not in a picture. I think I'm going to be fine. Actually, I am angry about something. It just happened today. What? So when we came here today. Uh-huh. Yeah. I've always thought that door is just locked and you can only open it from the outside. Oh, the door. No one's ever told me that that's not a true thing. What do you mean? The you- the screen door, the front glass opens. door. And the niece you- comes out. She's like, "Oh, you put you put it up." Oh, nobody told you that. No <laughs> one told me you that. You're and lying. that's how the games come entry. <laughs> Brandon has come several times to open the door for me when it's just a glass door, and he's just like, "What are you talking about?" He never about? said you can put it up. He always sees me ring the doorbell. And I'm just like, <laughs> "What are you?" So I'm like, "That's how I get treated in this family. I don't get told." meaningful information <laughs> about how to access <laughs> things. Bro, that no. just completely epitomizes how the game treats Adams in this family. But you've no. been over here so many times you never thought to lift the... No, because I'm not going to break the door. You see how nice these houses are. I'm, I'm a black man out here, man. <laughs> I can't be jiggling front doors because I will be immediately arrested. So I don't touch the door. Okay? You, okay. I don't jiggle a door because... Sam. The guy across the street, I know he has a gun. Sam. I've seen it. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Sam. This is so cap. Because you remember that one day? The what one day, one day? I literally never knew this. Li- literally. No, I go to the door. Oh Sam's God. looking off into space. He's staring off into space. And I'm like, what's wrong with you, dude? And then I open the, I open the main door before the screen door. He's talking about the screen door. And I'm like, and then he like goes over and I'm like lift up. And then you lift it up and I was like, what? What is wrong with you? And you said, man, the birds chirp different out here. They don't chirp like that where I'm from. And I was like, what are you talking? You literally opened the door that day. This is what you always do. What? You always try to like, I do a story, then you do a story that really outshines me. (laughs) (laughs) I took the story order and I'm going with mine. (laughs) That show for guys. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon's like, so kitchens. Yeah, so kitchens. <laughs> Am I the asshole for purchasing my guy friend his dream birthday present and outshining his girlfriend in the process? My guy friend, Tom, has been one of my <laughs> best friends since college. We're in our mid 20s now, and we're both currently in committed relationships with long term partners. I've never had feelings for Tom, nor has he ever had mm-hmm. feelings for me. Uh oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh. Since college, Tom has been a huge watch fanatic. Two months ago, he was showing me this stunning vintage watch and made an offhanded comment about how he would die of joy if somehow he got his hands on one. 
very coincidentally, I was in New York City a few weeks ago and stumbled upon this watch store that just so happened to have the exact one that Tom wanted. It was expensive, I won't lie, at about $2,500, but I decided to get it for his 25th birthday. To me, it was basically fate. My boyfriend and I do very well financially, so this was something that I could personally afford and wanted to buy for Tom especially knowing how happy it would make him. Tom has a tradition of hosting a dinner party at his place for his birthday and then following that up with cake and gift opening. I told him before the dinner that my gift was a huge surprise and asked if he could save it for last and he agreed. His girlfriend ends up going first and she gets him this gorgeous sweater that was crocheted for him and a book that he's been wanting, which I thought was super thoughtful and yeah. lovely. <laughs> <laughs> last, it was my gift and when he opened it, and saw what it was, he literally screamed, hopped over a bunch of people, squeezed me in a huge bear hug. I was so happy to see him happy. It genuinely filled me with so much joy. He even got emotional and I saw him wipe a few tears. He also said that it was the best gift he'd ever received. The whole time, his girlfriend was only slightly smiling and stayed <laughs> quiet. Mm -hmm. The next morning, I got a text from his girlfriend that essentially said that although she appreciated my thoughtful gift, she thought it was a bit out of touch and lacking awareness. She admitted that Tom had also told her about the watch and she wanted to get it for him, but it was way out of her budget. She accused me of knowing this, I had no idea, and still getting it to rub it in her face and to outshine her. She finished by saying how she felt like I had overstepped a boundary by getting the gift and would appreciate me not doing anything similar again in the future. I responded and told her that while I could see her point, I was just trying to do a nice thing for a close friend of mine. I asked her, wouldn't you rather he gotten the gift and seen the happiness that it brought him than him not getting it at all? She responded that the happiness was only shared between me and Tom and no one else and that she felt hurt by my actions. Only my boyfriend knows about this and he's on my side. By thinking through it all again, I do see how I could have overstepped, but my boyfriend says that it's not my job to apologize for her insecurities. So, am I the asshole here? No. Yeah? No. Because I think, like, if that's what's going to trigger you, that you can't afford to buy your significant other something, but somebody else can, why would you try to, like, diminish the thought of, like, oh, I, I couldn't afford it, but somebody else afforded it? Or is it because, like... Oh, another female mm -hmm. got the gift. Cause the yes, that is a thing. <laughs> but it's like, that I don't get that because it's like, you knew you couldn't afford it. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you had the money to get it and then they got it before you. That's not the thing at all. You couldn't get it. That, mm -hmm. And that's okay. But like, it's not like, I, I think it's more of an insecurity thing because... I can't afford to get my husband expensive stuff. So when other people do it, I'm like, hell yeah, I saved that money. I don't have to pay for that. <laughs> Somebody else bought that. I'm co cool. I got you a sweater. Yeah. Wear that sweater. <laughs> like, I don't know. With the watch. I, I think With the watch. I there think it's go. different, though, because for you, it's like married. Like, it's like a commitment that's like, you know, like you guys said vows for that. So it's like. Sure. You guys kind of have to fight through even if there is some sort of insecurity, which as like for dating wise, it's like, well, <laughs> he could just leave tomorrow. And I'm just like, SOL, you know, out twenty five hundred. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know. But I feel like the whole I don't I don't think anyone's wrong for feeling the way that they feel. True. I don't think anyone is necessarily the a-hole, but at the same time, <laughs> every every feeling that every person has experienced there is completely valid because it's like, on one hand, you know, if you could afford it, she probably would have got it. But yeah, right. like you were saying, she just couldn't. Right. So, so seeing someone else do it is like, ooh, that's the gift I wanted to get you, but I couldn't. Right. <laughs> so I got you this sweater and a book instead. <laughs> <laughs> a book. <laughs> That he wanted. He wanted the book, No, too. he got the greatest watch ever made, and you give me a book. He spits on the book. <laughs> like, oh. Doesn't even read it. This is no. I'll never read this book. The sweater shrinks. No, that's why I think you are right. I do think, yeah, no one's actually truly the asshole, but I'm like, if I'm in that situation, we're both in committed relationships. That is weird to me to mm -hmm. spend that amount of money 
on my friend. Knowing I have a partner, because I'm like, have I ever spent $25 on my boyfriend who actually is a person here? I'm glad he's being supportive, but I'm like, that's weird to me. My head would just go to that. Because right. I'm imagining this is me and you. Like, we've been friends for a long time, and I just bought you that kind of thing. I don't know how I would tell my girlfriend. I'm like, yeah, I just bought Myra like a $3,000 <laughs> thing. And you're like, and she's okay with it, and everybody's okay with just it. Just like tears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. I'm glad. I just feel like there's something weird about it. I don't think it's necessarily bad, but I do think it's something weird that. I don't know if you never had feelings for him. I feel like there's something there. Maybe it's completely true. They never had feelings for each other. But I'm like, $2,500 is a lot of money. No, for sure. For sure. Unless you're Warren Buffett and you're like, oh, yeah, I just buy my friends. Nice lot. Yeah, like it's nothing to you. But I'm like, for the average person, $2,500 is just not a thing you just. Yeah. And she said, I, I can't afford it, which means like, I feel like can afford it. Can willingness to afford and actually like just being able to spend it like at a flip of a switch are completely different. Right. Like I can't afford it could mean I need a budget for this just a little bit, but then I'll get it. Or like you know, just like I can buy this, but should I? Yeah. It probably doesn't make sense for me to right. buy it right now, but I can afford it because <laughs> you can afford something. Twenty five hundred, but you got three thousand. Yeah, like, I got three thousand. Like, I, I can't the afford this. Of money to cover it. <laughs> I have enough money to cover it. I'm just going to be down like a thousand after this. I won't pay my rent. Right. I'm eating. I'm like, then you're in love month. with this person. Because <laughs> Maddie, I imagine you in this situation. Me. Yeah, and I don't think you would like have the conversation, like like don't ever buy my boyfriend. <laughs> but I think you would feel some type of way if someone bought Brandon. Sure. Gift. I can see that where if if I like we're talking about she wanted to get him like uh, the watch, but she couldn't afford to do it. Yeah, I would probably be like, OK, <laughs> that sucks. Uh, what's the next cheapest thing you want? <laughs> um, the next cheapest thing? <laughs> Let's start, from, yeah, let's start let's start from the bottom up. What's the cheapest thing you want? <laughs> Do you like water? Yeah, I know you right. like water. Are let's you a water person? Dollar. You be drinking water like crazy. Like, I got you a water bottle. <laughs> like, like I would have taken you to like McDonald's, but that's not cheap anymore. So oh, they lost the dollar menu. The dollar menu's gone. Yeah. Oh, no, it's crazy. It's like the value menu. Like no. Where's the value Where's at the... McDonald's? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Sam, you said and I think Brandon said it too. You guys are saying it's weird that they're paying this much money. Yes. But in the story, she does say that she can afford it. And I don't think it's necessarily like an afford of, you know, <laughs> I'm struggling to pay, you know, rent after this, like yeah, we're talking about. Yeah. I don't think it's that way. No, I don't think it's that I way. Think, yeah. Saying afford is a different thing than saying like, right. I have the money. And mm -hmm. you said that has she given her boyfriend this much money? The yeah. way that he agreed, I'm like. That's they're weird giving, to me. They're giving gifts. Right. I don't know. And maybe, I don't know. I think he's just like, maybe they want a third. Whatever you want, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you can buy your that friend one. anything. They got maybe. upside down pineapples just everywhere. Everywhere. Oh. <laughs> but you just have to think that like, if she's willing to spend 2500 on just a friend, she's probably dropping freaking bundles so. on That's her boyfriend. I would hope like, so. One would think. I would hope you so. You would think. Especially since you said that they're well off. And she went to New York. You know how expensive that is? She got money. Mm -hmm. She got New York <laughs> she money. Got money. She got money. She got New York But she money. didn't go to New York, New York. She went to Rochester. How did you know? <laughs> <laughs> they went to Albany. <laughs> I think the last thing I want to know is he's got like such this specific schedule, right? It's like, you know the cake, you know, and then the gift opening. And it's like, where is he doing this gift opening? Is it like out in the front for everybody to see? Or is it in the kitchen like this next story? Yes! <laughs> I knew he was wrapping up, but it Me was too. still good. It was, I was clean. Just, I, was, I was so excited for it. I'm waiting for it. I'm like, I'm waiting to hear the word. <laughs> but also, I wish you had hit it faster on mine. I hit it at the perfect right. time. <laughs> no, that was, Chill, that was all perfect. That was fine. Sam, you're just hitting because you're on the couch. Uh, I'm on the other couch. That's no, that one was perfect. <laughs> Mine, she was like, oh, yeah, no, I, uh, I'm I, like, I loved how quick it was on that one. I'm like, I wish there was some of that energy on my side. Okay, <laughs> I'll say like, this. Yours was so smooth and it happened so fast. I was like, uh. 
Am I the asshole for screaming at my husband and his sister to get out of my kitchen? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's my kitchen. I'll scream yeah. at whoever I want to scream at. I yell at people in my kitchen. <laughs> like, yeah, chef. Uh, she yelled at me. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> My husband's sister, 38, lives with us and our kids. I'm well beyond fed up with her being here because of food issues. That's the only reason. So basically, every single time I make food, his sister will come and doctor up the food I'm making to her liking. Like I made steak and shrimp the other day, like Applebee's, and she waited until I left the room to put a full stick of butter in my shrimp that was already done. And when I came back, she goes, I'm pretty sure that's the taste you were looking for. <laughs> And completely ruined it. It was trash. Or whenever I make spaghetti, she will start dumping sugar into the sauce to oh. a point to a point of sweet spaghetti that me and my kids outright refuse to touch because it's nasty. Every single time that she can get away with it, she's doing something to the food. Anyways, my husband has started doing the same thing. I went to make homemade mac last night and cheeseburgers. I went to the basement to the chest freezer to grab the veggies I needed. And when I came back up, my husband was putting canned chicken into the mac and cheese. He knows the kids absolutely hate the taste of that. And his sister has pushing blocks of blue cheese into the partially cooked burgers. I asked what the mm. fuck they thought they were doing because I told them so many times to stop fucking with my food. And neither of them had any good excuse other than, oh, we were just helping. I flipped out and told them to get the F out of my kitchen. Both of them told me that I was overreacting, etc. The thing is, I've openly asked my sister-in-law to cook several times and she won't, but she won't stop fucking with my food that I'm making. <laughs> my husband cooks often and I don't care if he screws with the food that he makes, but it royally pisses me off when my cooking is messed with and he knows that. Am I the asshole? No. No. Because all those things are gross. <laughs> Except for the blue cheese and the... Burger. And the burger. That's actually kind of fire. Can chicken and macaroni. Oh. You psychopath. Oh. <laughs> that's that's criminal. <laughs> that is criminal. Yuck. They should make a Netflix documentary about this man. Yeah, they should. How dark he is. <laughs> Twisted. Put him on yeah. Black Mirror. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I mean, especially because she's saying, why don't you guys just make food on a different night? Why are you messing with the food that I'm making? Right. right. Um, that is probably so annoying. <laughs> and the fact that she's communicated it, you guys are like, we're all adults. I'm telling you, I don't like it. Stop. Right. Why do you keep doing it? So. And then there's like, you can't just do it to your plate. Yeah. You can't just. Right. Like, Good point. Pour your food and put then sugar do. sugar on your own bowl. Yeah. Spaghetti. Put sugar in your bowl. You got to do it to all the bowls. The, whole, the pot. Mm -hmm. That's, that's wrong. Especially if she could like contributing money to the food. Because then I'd, be, I'd be, be heated. I'm, yeah. Seriously. I'm kicking muffos out of my kitchen at that hey! point. <laughs> 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 Sam didn't even catch it. I, I didn't like, catch it. That I was, was so like, smooth. Stone face. I'm like. <gasps> <laughs> I didn't get it until she pressed the button. I was like, wait. <gasps> I totally forgot. Did she and, wink at you? No. No. Oh, you just knew it was coming? Yeah. Um, am I the asshole? And, I, and we can't. I don't. I don't need to hear your opinion or your opinion anymore because we've already moved on. So, okay. So I guess you guys have the power to, to see how fast the stories go. Story. Okay. You okay. guys have a lot of power here. Okay, I like that. Just in the middle of my story, yeah. kicking. <laughs> <laughs> we got We have to move on. We Man, to too bad yeah. people were mocking each other. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. <laughs> Skip the whole story. Yeah. <laughs> Am I the asshole for kicking my sister-in-law out for making my drunk husband feel like shit? I feel no. like drunk husbands are the best kind usually of oh. <laughs> not okay when <laughs> when they're drunk. <laughs> when they're drunk. When, they're when drunk. a drunk husband's drunk, that's not okay. It's not okay. Because <laughs> you lower your inhibitions. You're saying things that you should not be saying. Like there, There's a reason why some people shouldn't drink in public. My sister-in-law, her husband, and her kid, 14 are staying with me and my husband for the next week because there's a family funeral and all hotels were booked out for the Bluegrass Fest and Kane Brown concert. We have a big farmhouse, so it's not a big deal, but sister-in-law is very opinionated. My sister-in-law and my husband have different fathers. Her dad died from liver failure 10 years ago, and his death date just passed by not too long ago. 
He was a massive alcoholic, and due to this, my sister-in-law turns into a bitch whenever she sees anyone drinking, especially people in her family. Well, my husband, who isn't a big drinker, went out with his friends last night, and as kind of a last hurrah, because he'll be welcoming our first daughter to the world in about a month, he just wanted to celebrate his becoming of a father. I encouraged him to go. I arranged for his Uber back home, and he came in around 11 p.m. last night. He was very drunk. He walked into the door singing Let's Stay Together by Al Green. (laughs) dancing Uh, spinning me around the living room floor in some very sloppy waltz and laughing the whole time as he was tripping all over himself now my dad is an alcoholic too so i get it but honestly i was having a fucking blast with my drunk husband sister-in-law comes into the room and just starts laying into my husband about him drinking screaming about how he was going to turn out just like dad (laughs) etc at this point my husband's mood is dead He's crying. I lost it. I told her, how how can he turn out like a piece of shit when that piece of shit isn't his father? Get out of my house right now and don't ever come back. Oh. She immediately went quiet and said she couldn't take her daughter out at this time and that no hotels had vacancy and my husband knew better than to drink around her. And I told her that's not my problem. Leave. The whole family is pissed at me and my husband right now for both him drinking in front of sister-in-law and me kicking them out at midnight. Am I the asshole? I don't think so, because she, she's projecting her shitty father to somebody who, it sounds like he's not even anything remotely close to what her dad was. So it's like, yeah, I may not agree with people drinking, but it looks like you're being sensible about it, I guess. So I don't think she was wrong to kick them out. Mm-hmm. She also said in the caption, she said, I didn't kick out the daughter or the husband. I just told him. I just told her that she needed to leave. Oh. So, but she was like, my daughter can't go anywhere. She's like, I didn't say anything about your daughter. I was like, uh, no, I fine. said you. I said you. <laughs> you need to leave. This is a you targeted leave, approach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the only part where I'm like, you're being a little bit of an asshole. You could say, don't talk to my husband like that. He's a beautiful, let's get it on. That's a beautiful <laughs> song, and we are going to get it on. And don't ever, like, get in my f- my flavor like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, we about to get it on. You ruin it now. He's crying over here. How are we going to make love and he's crying? Like, that's ruining our vibe. So I get how mad you got, but also you can't kick him out at midnight. Kick him out the next day, mm. you know? I, that's the part where I'm like, you're being a little bit of an... Just like, go to your room. <laughs> like a child. Yeah. yeah. That's what I would have done. Go to your room. You're sleeping on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get the bed anymore. You get the floor. <laughs> yeah. But then also, if she wanted to be all making bad, just pull the house card. <laughs> Whose house is it? Huh? Uh, right. Oh, Lord. You can't talk to me about that. You, this is my house. He can do whatever you want. And guess what? This is his house. So if he wants to come yeah, home drunk, he gonna, he gonna come, come drunk. home drunk, drunk, spinning, singing, <laughs> which is exactly what he did. He did what he was supposed to do. Twerking. You messing up everything. <laughs> He's throwing it back. Yeah. Right. Are you gonna tell him he can't do that? <laughs> yeah. Because also we are gonna get it on, as he said to us. <laughs> But also, like, what room did she did she go into? Like their bedroom? Because why? I feel like it was like the living room. Oh, okay, yeah, I was I gonna say been... you're just opening people's doors. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Like, she's you the freaking <laughs> pastor from Footloose. No dancing in here. <laughs> no drinking. No dancing <laughs> in your own home. I feel like it's just a tough situation because it sounds like sister-in-law obviously still has like a lot of trauma attached to the situation but i feel like she's throwing the trauma onto other people and ruining uh brother his buzz Mm -hmm. but but to be honest like yeah because i don't really think he's a bad guy honestly you can just blame it on the alcohol alcohol I keep forgetting what yes, your words are. That's why I'm like, I knew I was going to do it on this one. But I'm like, <laughs> alcohol, we're talking about alcohol the whole time. We're actually going to catch that I'm doing it. I know. All I saw was we're the extreme bad, eye contact. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, and I was like, <laughs> transition <laughs> face. <laughs> I, was like, how, I was thinking, I was like, how can I fit my word into here? And then you said that, and I was like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. God, Too late. <laughs> Am I the asshole for being pissed there's no alcohol at a wedding? <laughs> yes. Didn't we do one? 
We did one similar to that. Yeah, this one's similar. this one's new. Okay. Dry wedding. Yeah, dry wedding. Yeah. Which they were assholes. I <laughs> stand by that. <laughs> Trash. Water. <laughs> water and lemonade was it? no it wasn't oh lemonade. was it just straight water they didn't have juice <laughs> yeah. that burning sucked <laughs> they didn't even have pop or anything that's crazy yeah they were assholes <laughs> diet H2O one of my male 35 best friends male 34 got married last week he drinks alcohol and our friend group will meet up at breweries a few times a month to hang out his fiance now wife does not drink it's never been a part of her life my wife and I got a hotel room by the reception space and Ubered to the wedding. The ceremony occurs. We go to what's supposed to be the cocktail hour and there's just soda and water, no alcohol. This was not something we knew about ahead of time. There was a palpable buzz among our friend group at the lack of booze. <laughs> a lot of us had spent money on a hotel room and Ubering anticipating drinking. I'm kind of pissed. Bride and groom came to the cocktail hour. Everyone cheers it. Cheers and they when were the drunk. <laughs> <laughs> hey everybody, we're <laughs> back. <laughs> like, Where did you get that from? <laughs> Where's ours? <laughs> bride and groom come to the cocktail hour. Everyone cheers and when the bride and groom come mingle with us, I ask, "Where is the booze?" His new wife chimes in, saying her family does not drink and they were paying for the wedding, thus no alcohol. I tell them we should have known ahead of time. I say I wasted money on a hotel room and Ubering. I would have just driven if I had known or maybe even not come. (laughs) The bride does not take my commentary well and implies that I might have a drinking problem. I don't. I openly drink with my friends. The groom says I don't need to be such an asshole. I reiterate that I spent a bunch of money on something that I didn't need. We all did. The bride is pissed at me and asked me to leave. My wife and I leave, but it's clear I touched a nerve. In our group chat, friends were mixed on me saying something. My my wife says I wasn't wrong, but my timing was wrong. So was I the asshole? Mm. I still say yes because mm. you're not paying for it. Yeah. <laughs> you're not. Bring your own booze then. You can't Uber some booze to you? I don't well, know. Well, they didn't know. I mean, but they found out. They still had to, yeah. the whole reception yeah. time to get booze at that point <laughs> can't uber eat some i don't know in cart <laughs> well, they already spent a bunch of money on the hotel and an uber there now you're gonna have me get the delivery charges yeah i think that's the biggest thing that i'm like questioning in this like <laughs> what type of hotel were you getting like did you get like a four-star hotel like it was just gonna be for one night to a place you could have drove well, why are you spending, like, so much money on a hotel when you could have just got a cheap one? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, if they live close enough, I don't know why they didn't just Uber home unless they were planning on doing some nasty stuff. Of course. <laughs> and, I don't know, they wanted to live it up in a hotel room. I don't know. You go to a wedding. You get all horned up from the love being displayed <laughs> in the ceremony. He's you like, go, that's hot, Brad. <laughs> you get drunk at the reception, and then you're going back to the hotel, and it's getting crazy in there. They had a whole thing planned. All these couples did, and now you're like, <laughs> no alcohol. He's like, I have to have sex with you sober? Yeah. Right. I got, oh! a, I got a raw dog this whole thing. It ruined the whole moment. Because I think this is better than the other story we did. At least they had, like, soda and stuff, because, yeah, they did us have water. That's what made me mad. I'm like, no one just, <laughs> you just gave me water. There's a whole meal, and I'm drinking water at a wedding. I'll be pissed. But I do think there's something. If you go to a wedding, you expect alcohol. And I know it's not like you're right, but it's something you expect. Like maybe something should be put on the invitation. Like, well, yeah, that's this what I was is gonna a say too. dry a, or right. bring your own alcohol or something. <laughs> Bubbles, but no suds. <laughs> something to show that because I'm like, that is, it's not uncommon to have alcohol at a wedding. Mm-hmm. Every wedding I've been to has had an open bar, baby, and we're getting litty titty in there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I think also the other crazy part is that uh, the friend was like, I don't know if it was a joke. But he said, had I known there was no alcohol, I would have just drove or not even come. Yeah. <laughs> Does alcohol have that much of an effect on you that you, you wouldn't go to your friend's wedding? Well, I think he, for me, in that conversation, I think he just added that on like to make it more serious because they were like, okay, you didn't drive. I don't, that doesn't matter. I'm like, oh, I wouldn't have came. And to hurt him, like, this is what this means to me. <laughs> then, uh, 
you would uh, just start mocking him back, just like, yo. <laughs> Am I the asshole for mocking my friend's husband's weight? Yes. Yes. My 22 female, best friend Jenny, 23 <coughs> female, just recently had a baby with her husband, Tom. My boyfriend and I got to meet their baby boy for the first time last weekend when they came over to our flat for dinner. We have a hot tub on our balcony that my parents gave us for Christmas last year, and I told them to bring swimwear so that we could go in after dinner. My boyfriend wasn't up for it, so he held the baby while the three of us got ready to get to the tub. Jenny was the last person to get changed and came out of the bathroom in a bikini. I thought she looked amazing really happy and glowing but tom kind of laughed and said something about her still having some weight to lose before she'd be as attractive as she was before her pregnancy i was a bit stunned by that comment and even though jenny didn't say anything her smile disappeared and she looked obviously uncomfortable she and i had talked about her struggling with weight gain during her pregnancy and i thought tom's comment was more than insensitive i got angry because i started wondering what he might be saying to her in private if he was comfortable dropping lines like that in front of other people so i responded with she just had a baby what's your excuse <gasps> the dude has a hefty beer belly and a double chin that he thinks <laughs> the dude <laughs> he thinks he can joke about a new mom's weight he got really defensive and told me that i need to learn how to take a joke before stomping out of the hot tub jenny chuckled oh. at my comment and i thought that was that but when they left for the night, Tom pulled me aside and told me to keep my nose out of other people's business. I don't think I was entirely in the wrong, but my boyfriend told me I shouldn't have reacted at all because it wasn't really my business. And I think Tom's reaction speaks for itself. And it makes me wonder whether I might have been the asshole in that situation. When I had my daughter, I was like the whole thing was like, oh, my God, I gained so much weight and it's so hard. And you're already like you're exhausted you feel like crap you you look like crap because you're exhausted like and then those little comments are like yeah, just go fuck myself i guess like yeah. i'm doing my best so from your husband too right when you like especially your partner because they saw you go through that right. like evolution of creating this baby mm -hmm. and and it's little things like that like oh i I'm feeling myself in this in this moment in time, and you just shat on that moment, and it's like, like no, you look bad. <laughs> <laughs> like, ugh. <laughs> I I feel like that was, and then like on the friend side too, because <clears throat> I've had friends who've had babies, and people make like the dumb little thing, but it's like you're trying to be protective of your friend that just went through this thing, and you're trying to be empathetic and be like that clearly hurt your feelings because you're no longer smiling. So mm. it was not a joke to you. So I think, I don't think she was an asshole. I retract my statement. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not an asshole. I mean, I probably would have said the same thing because then he say, he was like, you don't know how to take a joke. I'm like, where yeah. was his joke? Right. It seemed like he was just being like, no, she'll look better when she's skinnier. Like he, he was, that wasn't a joke. That was a comment that he made that was like rude. What? Yeah, he couldn't take the joke. Yeah. Because she said the joke right back. Right. I'm like, Tom, you're looking kind of thick in them shorts already. I don't know who you talking <laughs> to, boy. <laughs> What's your excuse? Yeah. <laughs> I think you need to be wearing a two-piece because those things are swinging to, to and fro. <laughs> Tom, I would go in on Tom. You said that about my friend? <laughs> Not my friend. You would never talk to my friend like that. Yeah, Tom, where's your, where's your uh, D-cup top? Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Tom to Tom Tom, you know. What I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Tom Tom Tom. <laughs> with that, I just want to say thank you guys what? for coming to the Cumber Level oh, podcast. Just getting started, baby. Um, <laughs> Done. That He's was the so intro. Floaty. That was the intro. Oh, now we're goodness. gonna get to the real podcast. <laughs> to the meat. Um, <laughs> thank you, Myra. Thank, thank you, you Myra. Thank we you, Myra. I finally get someone that I want to be on the show. It's been a parade of their family. It's a parade. So, so we'll see you guys and no next one wants week. To, um, my best friend. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Myra. She's on, the show. She's on, like, on the cousin couch too. We'll see you guys That's next crazy. week. And then they're gonna cut it off. I don't know if this episode. Bye. Is gonna Bye. Are you gonna air this episode? Yeah. <laughs> okay.